What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Chevy Trailblazer LS. Huge thank you to Kai Himes over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Trailblazer or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, then I'll be sure to have Kai's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Well, because it seems like nobody else on YouTube does base model reviews, I guess that's what I'm here for. So if you have any requests of any vehicles you wanna see me review, let me know in the comments down below. But just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Chevy Trailblazer LS, and this particular one has been painted in the $395 fountain blue. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Chevy refreshed the Trailblazer inside and out, and you will see in today's video what I am talking about. But this being the LS, as standard, you get LED headlights with IntelliBeam as well as standard turn signals. And when I take a step to the left, this is what the refreshed front end looks like. It looks sharper, it looks more sporty, and this being the LS, you get a satin black front grille with that chrome grille bar. And you obviously you notice your Chevy bow tie at the center of that. And then coming down just a little bit more, you get a satin black lower fascia and seven and a half inches of ground clearance. And that lower fascia leads into your satin black wheel arch moldings. And then these are the standard wheels you get with the LS and they are 17 inch silver painted wheels and they are wrapped in 225 60 Continental Pro Contact TX all season tires. Here's a closer view of the wheel face. And here is a view of the tread pattern on those tires there real quick. Here's a front three quarter shot of this thing. You may notice that you do get gloss black A pillars as well as satin black side mirrors. And as standard, these side view mirrors are manual folding and power adjustable. Here's a little side profile shot of this thing. You may notice that you do get satin black window trim as well as body color door handles and some satin black door cladding. If you are interested in a higher trim level. The only other 2024 Trailblazer I've done a video with was the 2024 Trailblazer RS. You might want to check that video out after watching this one. But behind here, you have your filler neck. You do have to twist that off in order to fill this thing up. And 87 octane will do you just fine. Up top here, you got your antenna. You get a body color roof spoiler. Here is a rear three quarter shot of this thing. And then up top here, integrated into your roof spoiler, you have your third brake light, then you have your rear window defroster, your rear wiper, you get standard tail lights, Chevy bow tie, chrome trailblazer lettering. And then coming down here, you get a backup camera located about there. And then to the right of the backup camera, you'll feel a little pad, press on that pad and lift up. And that is how you open up your lift gate. Decent amount of storage space here in the trunk area considering the size of this little SUV. If you need a little bit more storage space, you can push forward on this and push forward on the seat and then you get it about an additional, I don't know, four feet of storage space. Then you can see you get probably about, you know, seven or eight feet of storage space with those second row seats down. Then you get a storage cubby on both sides of the trunk as well as a light on the driver's side of the trunk. And if you lift up on this, you get a little bit of storage space and that is your temporary spare tire. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. So closing that trunk, finishing things off here at the back end, you get two reflectors, a satin black lower bumper, and that's kind of about it for the exterior looks perspective. If you tow, if you need a jet ski, or if you have a jet ski, um, you do have a max tow capacity of 1,000 pounds. So even a tow in a jet ski might be pushing it, but maybe you could tow a utility trailer with a little bit of brush that you cleared from your property. But that's about it for the exterior of the LS. So with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop it open that hood reveals the optional $395 1.3 liter turbo three cylinder that makes 155 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a continuously variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in nine and a half seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 29 miles per gallon in the city, 33 miles per gallon on the highway for 31 miles per gallon combined with front wheel drive. I did want to mention that this does come standard with a 1.2 liter. However, if you got the 1.3 liter like this one has and all wheel drive, you get a nine speed automatic transmission, which is better than the CVT in my personal opinion. But 
If you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video this far, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. The likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, you do not get keyless access. So in order to get into the interior, you have to press this unlock button right here. And now the vehicle is unlocked. And then walking you through a couple of the other functions on the key fob, you have your panic function and your lock function. But let's take a look at what the interior of the LS has to offer. So this is the jet black cloth upholstery, but we'll get into that here in a second. So starting with the door panel, it is rather basic. This is the LS after all. So up top here, you get some satin black plastic, some gray trim, you're unlocking your lock functions, your power side view mirror controls. This button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get an automatic up and down driver window. All the other windows are automatic down only. And then your armrest right here is vinyl wrapped. It has a little bit of padding to it. And then you get a little bit of storage space, a spot you can sit a water bottle and a speaker. You also get a manually adjustable driver's seat, a manually adjustable passenger seat. This is what these seat controls look like. This is what these seats look like. Now let's step into the interior and see what the rest of the interior has to offer. So you may notice what's new for 2024. That is what it sounds like when you fire this thing up. Take a listen to the door. Doesn't sound too bad when you close the door, to be honest. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you throughout the entire interior, starting with this right here. So if I press on that, this is gonna pop out. And now I can brighten and or dim my gauge cluster, uh, as well as my backlit buttons with this little knob here. And then this is your headlight control. All the way to the right is headlights on, parking lights on, and that is headlights automatic. Coming down here, obviously you can pop open your hood. And then when I flip this down, that gives me access into my manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So I can bring the steering wheel towards me. I can push it away from me and I can move it up and down. That's kind of nice because on the base model um, Chevy Colorado, it's only a tilting steering wheel, uh, manual tilting and st steering wheel. You have to step up to a higher trim level in order to get the telescoping. So that is definitely nice. But now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And then that button is going to turn your automatic high beams on or off. Zooming back out, this is what your steering wheel looks like. It is a vinyl wrapped wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen. <laughs> That is what the horn sounds like on the Trailblazer. So on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you have your cruise control settings as well as your gap adjust. So your gap adjust is basically for your forward collision warning system. Um, so this is like the least sensitive, that is the most sensitive, and basically you'll get a red light if you're coming up on a car too fast here and it's gonna flash in red, basically trying to catch your attention. And then uh, on this side of the steering wheel, this is to speak to the vehicle, this is to hang up on a phone call, Right here is going to bring me into my audio stuff on the screen. This is gonna bring me into my phone stuff on the screen. Um, and I'll get into that stuff here in a second. Uh, but this is your windshield wiper control stock. And now I guess we can move into our gauge cluster. So this is an eight inch digital gauge cluster. This is what it looks like. And up top here, you get your compass, you get your fuel gauge, your fuel range down there, digital speedometer readout, you got your tachometer, transmission status stuff there, that's your cruise control stuff. Uh, and then over here, that's like driver assistance stuff, that is your coolant temperature gauge and the odometer. Now, again, to navigate throughout this screen, you can either go into your music stuff or you can go into your phone stuff. Other than that, there's not much of adjustability uh, with that gauge cluster. Then you do get a physical volume control knob, which is definitely nice to see. And then this is your 11 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. So right now my phone is connected to it. We'll take a look at Apple CarPlay. It's basically full screen Apple CarPlay, which is definitely nice to see. Uh, and then when you click that home button, it brings you back into your Chevy screen. So on the left hand side of the screen, you have your different shortcut buttons into your music, Apple CarPlay. This is like vehicle information stuff. So you can see your maintenance, you get your trip stuff. Then you get your different auxiliary gauges and your maintenance stuff with the tire pressure, oil life, swiping over. And then you have your engine air filter life. 
And then uh, really not much going on with this screen either. You get your wireless Apple CarPlay stuff, wireless Android Auto stuff. And then this also does come with a Wi-Fi hotspot. So let's say you have a kid, your kid, uh, and you are going on a long road trip and your kid has an iPad. Well, you can actually connect your kid's iPad to the vehicle hotspot. So then they can watch YouTube while you're driving down I-95 or whatever highway you're driving down. So that's definitely a nice feature. And I like to see that on a base model. Um, then you got your different system settings here. You have your vehicle settings as well. You can see all these different vehicle settings, like your lighting settings, um, all of these different settings. And then you have your different apps. And that's kind of about it for that screen other than the time and the temperature. Then you get two HVAC vents. You have your hazard button, single zone climate control down here. That's what the climate control stack looks like. Then you get a USB-A port, a USB-C port, a 12 volt power outlet, and a little bit of storage space down here. You could set your phone down in if you wanted to. That is an iPhone 14 Pro Max and it fits down in there, no problem. Then you have these buttons here. So this is going to turn your auto stop start system on or off. This is going to turn your lane keeping system on or off. This is for traction control on or off. This is going to put you into your sport mode. This is going to put you into like your wintry driving mode. And then click it and then it goes off. So now you're just in normal mode. You get two cup holders here. This is a spot you could set your phone if you wanted to, but my phone's just a little bit too big to sit in there. So if you had like an iPhone, you know, 14 Pro or 15 Pro, it would fit in there. But this being the Pro Max, it does not fit in there. But you can set it like that. Um, so it does fit, but you do get an electronic parking brake in order to engage the parking brake You just pull up like that and if you wanted to disengage the parking brake You push your foot down on the brake push against that and the parking brake will disengage and then coming over to here um, If you wanted to go into low you go all the way back and then this is to upshift and or downshift So this is up this is downshift and that's it for that you get a little bit more storage space here you get a padded armrest, it's vinyl wrapped, and opening this up, no connectivity down in there, but I'd say, you know, probably about, you know, nine inches of depth in there, and then probably another, you know, eight inches of depth this way. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on down in there. We'll close that back up and move into our glove box. This is not a lockable glove box, but you get quite a bit of storage space in that glove box, and this is a massive tow hook. And that is what your tow hook looks like. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, good amount of storage space in the glove box considering the size of this little SUV. Then you get your rear view mirror. You get your OnStar stuff up top here. This is gonna let you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. These lights are halogen. And then this is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the door. So when it's flush like that, when I open up the door, the interior lights will turn on. If I have it clicked to the left, now when I open up the door, the interior lights will not turn on. And then if I click it all the way to the right, that is your instant dome light on button. It turns on both of your interior dome lights. Um, and then moving my way into our visor, you do not get vanity lights, but you do get a vanity mirror. And then let's see, does this slide forwards and backwards? No, this is fixed in position. So that what you see is what you get. It does not slide, but um, pop that back into position. Driver gets an Opu panel. The front passenger also gets an Opu panel. And that's really kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. So now I'm just going to throw the entire window sticker on screen. The only two options this vehicle has is the engine and the paint color. Uh, and you can read over everything you get as standard. But basically, I'm just going to highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Trailblazer LS is spec is $25,185. So comparing this to the tracks, um, really it comes down to personal preference. I feel like this is around the same size as the tracks. It might be a little bit bigger. Um, so I don't know. You can compare which one you like the looks of better, which one feels better to you on the interior but they feel very similar to me. But I wanna show you what we got going on here in the rear seats before getting into the driving portion of the video. So, opening these up, again, uh, you kinda wanna grab the seatbelt first and then close it so then the seatbelt doesn't get caught up in there. But I don't really care if it gets caught up on that side. This is what these rear seats look like. You do not get a center fold down armrest. This is what the door panel looks like here at the rear, very basic. Again, you get an automatic down window, but it does not go automatically up, but the window does go all the way down, which is nice. 
Then you get some storage space in the door panel and a speaker stepping on into these rear seats. Uh, I do believe that this is a fold flat passenger seat. So this guy on a road trip, let's say, you know, you have your kid in the second row, you don't have a front passenger. This seat will fold flat and you can basically use it as a footrest. But you do get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat as well as a seat back behind the passenger seat. Opu handle, a spot you could set your dry cleaning. And on this side, you only get an Opu handle. You do not get a spot you could set your dry cleaning. And then you have your dome light back here uh, as well. And speaking of leg and knee room, I've got actually quite a bit of leg and knee room. Here's another view of my leg and my knee room. And then when it comes to headroom being five foot nine, I've got quite a bit of headroom left over. I'm actually kind of surprised, but you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the video take a listen okay so getting into power i know i said this had like a nine and a half second zero to 60 time we're gonna go around this turn because these things handle surprisingly well um it doesn't feel like terribly slow when you're not flooring it when you're just like doing a normal acceleration, it actually doesn't feel actually that slow. And it handles very well. That's something I've noticed about the Trailblazers, that they handle way better than you would expect them to be. And I mean like way better. By the way, I really like this house that they put up here. Uh, it's got a really nice deck, nice garage. Maybe I can have a house like that one day. If you guys like it, subscribe. But uh, anyways, this handles very well. And when you're not flooring it, it doesn't feel actually that slow. It feels like a decent, good amount of power. But when you floor it and you start getting up around like 40 miles an hour, you're like, okay, well, that's where this thing feels slow, uh, is when you floor it, you're like, okay, that's all you got. But if you're just doing normal, like regular accelerations, like if you're buying this car, you probably will be doing most of the time, you'll be happy with the power here. See what I'm saying? It's got more than enough get up just to do normal accelerations from stoplight to stoplight. Um, so that's, you know, that's good. You don't always need to have a whole bunch of power, but we're gonna test what the power is like here on the highway. Um, we're a little bit ways away from that, but I wanna see what this thing's like, you know, power wise, cruising at about, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. So you have an idea you know, of what the power level is like if you're gonna be driving this thing around town. Because around town, it's got the get up. You're not gonna be disappointed with the power unless you floor it from stoplight to stoplight, which would make no sense uh, because you get terrible fuel economy and then also you're just beating up your vehicle for no reason. So we're gonna test the power of what it's like on the highway, but around town, uh, it's got more than enough get up. So another thing I wanted to get into before getting into the highway stuff is this, sound system isn't terrible considering the price point it really isn't that bad so that is also good um obviously i've heard better sound systems but considering the price point of this vehicle the sound system really isn't that bad so the sound system gets a pass here's a nice little you know let's do floored acceleration from a stop a little bit of wheel spin Honestly, it doesn't feel like anemically slow. It's not super fast, but it's not like anemically slow. Like I felt anemically slow before and this isn't this isn't quite that bad. Also, I didn't mention this, but you do get uh, your volume controls behind these, this side of the steering wheel and your tuning controls behind this side of the steering wheel. Figured I'd mention that now. Here's just a regular highway acceleration with a little bit of extra beans. That IS500 Lexus looks really good. Okay, right? So now we're going about 70 miles an hour. And let's say I wanted to pass somebody, right? Let's see the passing power. Okay, it actually, it's got good passing power too. It's really not terrible. 
I'm actually, you know, considering that zero to 60 time, you may have thought that this thing was terrible. Take a listen to what it sounds like cruising at about 68. Also cruising at about 70, almost 70 miles an hour, it's actually like pretty quiet here on the interior. So yes, this interior looks pretty basic, right? Yeah, we know that. But when it comes to power, it doesn't have the most amount of power, but it's got actually decent highway acceleration and decent passing power as well, all things considered. And then it's actually pretty well insulated from the outside world as well as handles really well. By the way, they're talking about putting a casino right here, which would be absolutely terrible. I really hope that they don't do that. Um, but this thing handles very well. Anyways, I'm going to have to get cut all the way across these lanes of traffic here. I had the window sticker like block in my view. Otherwise, I'd look over my shoulder. But I'm telling you guys, this for the money is a good value. You know, it's yes, it's basic, but it's got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. It has a backup camera. Yes, it does not have blind spot monitoring. It doesn't have, you know, adaptive cruise control or even keyless access. But, you know, for the money, it's not too bad. You know, and if you want keyless access and you want remote start, you can opt for a higher trim level. This one is just, you know, what you get for the base model. It gives you everything that you need. It gives you for 395 bucks, it gives you the bigger engine, more power. If you want a nine speed automatic transmission, get the all wheel drive. Um, so that is one thing that the Trax versus the Trailblazer, in the Trax, you cannot get all wheel drive. Whereas with the Trailblazer, you can get all wheel drive if you are comparing those two models. Um, but really, that's kind of about it for today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section down below and hit that subscribe button. Again, the likes and comments in particular look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. So I'd appreciate it if you do those three things, but only if you're enjoying the video. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.